Welcome to the Bob Balance HealthCast, episode number 346, a case study of hypothyroidism. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Maupin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about hormone replacement therapy for women, which is available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. One of the things that we frequently get requests for are more case studies. People seem to uh, recognize themselves in the stories of other people uh, or somebody that they know or what have you, but they find them fascinating. And I actually like the process of talking about it because it's more revelatory of the way that Dr. Moffin thinks and problem solves. And one of the, the uh, strengths that she has in training other physicians who want to uh, become anti-aging specialists and to... Uh, provide testosterone or other hormone replacements through bioidentical pellets, the method that she uses, is she trains them uh, to do that, which is a fairly simple procedure as a non-physician, I would say that. Uh, a physician might say it more, diff- more respectfully. Uh, but she trains them about estimating dosage and problem solving. Those are the critical pieces that a lot of the training programs that are available out there for doctors don't teach them. They just teach them how to do the procedure, and then after that, they're on their own. So the strength of getting training from Dr. Maupin, if your physician is interested, they can contact us about that, is that Dr. Maupin will work with them on the skill set for problem solving that she uses. And one of the ways that she manifests that in the training and and on these health casts is she walks through case studies that she uh, has experienced with clients. And of course, all the descriptors are respectfully private. We, We don't identify anything that you would recognize someone that you knew from. Uh, but these are real people with real problems, mm-hmm. and they come to you as problems, and you try to figure out what in the world is going on and how in the world am I going to be able to help them. Many of these people, actually when we present these, many of these people are composites of my patients so that no one could ever really recognize everything that's their blood work or their or their history or their story because I don't want anyone to look at our health cast and go, oh, that is that's me. Joan Smith. Yeah. That's Joan that's So me. it's yeah. never really... Of course, me. the hypochondriacs out there will recognize themselves no matter how many <laughs> Well, that's, right. your, that's your problem because yeah, then they come you, deal, you yeah. deal with them. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, so, th- so this, is, this today, this is a case study about, w- w- excuse me, with a patient who has low thyroid. So I'm going to give you the answer before we, did, we go okay. through all of this the um, evidence that tells me that so that I can make the diagnosis. But she also has a low testosterone, so it makes it a little bit more difficult to diagnose her problems because the, the, the symptoms of testosterone, of low testosterone and low thyroid, sometimes are interwoven and are confusing. So if you're just looking for thyroid, You'll say, oh, it's just thyroid. If you're just looking for low testosterone, that's what you'll see. And in fact, one of the reasons I wanted to tell this story is because I got I got an anonymous fax at my office with an entire medical history that someone wanted me to tell her doctor what to do, which is something that doctors don't do. That's, I mean, you don't, the ethics of it. don't appreciate that anonymous call from someone claiming to be a doctor right. saying, you need to do this for so I mean, so. we, don't, yeah. we, we don't tell people, other doctors, here, here's your, here's what you're supposed to do. Right. I mean, we can show a case study. We can, they can learn from what we say on air, but we, I don't tell other doctors what to do right. unless they come to me for training. And then I give them advice. Right. But that just, so this is what spurred this was one of the things that she had was low thyroid, but they were giving her testosterone for it. But so there was a confusion there, and that is one of our because big of the overlap issues. or the merging of the symptomology, right? Right. Okay. But this, but also, this was a doctor who had been trained by um, one of the franchises, and and basically he had one hammer. His hammer was was testosterone, and everything looked like. Uh, what he should hammer it with. It looked like symptoms of testosterone. That's actually what's called the law of the hammer. 
Is it? Yeah, and the law of the hammer is if you give a three-year-old a hammer, everything is a nail. <laughs> right. Yeah. So. <laughs> well, similar. Yeah. So if you give somebody one answer to all the different symptoms, right. then that's all they're going to see. So this is the, this is a patient or a composite of my patients. We're going to call her Jan. She's 45 years old, and she's still cycling, and she still has periods, and she is still fertile, but she has had... Um, she is using a Mirena IUD, so, so she, she, want any more she does not want any more children, which is what at 45, we... At 45, I mean... And at 45, yeah. it would be dicey to have more children right. for most of us. So that is something that we generally require, that they are done with having babies if we're going to give them testosterone pellets, mm -hmm. because it can be a problem for pregnancy. You can cause damage to babies in utero if you are currently on testosterone. So we don't want any slip ups right. and they have to have reliable birth control. That's those are two of our, that's a rule for us. Right. So the birth control pill doesn't always work and sometimes they forget to take it. Yeah, but the gaps. pill the pill interferes with some of the things we're trying to do. Right. So the pill actually lowers testosterone levels. So some people come on come in to see us on the pill right. for different reasons. Right to shut down cysts on their ovaries or something else, and that's from their other doctor, mm -hmm. their gynecologist. And so we usually leave them on that, but it makes it harder for us to combat the side effects of the pill to make them normal. So, because the pill itself adjusts hormones. Yes, the pill and is a hormone. you're trying to change those hormones that it's adjusting, so right. they're counterbalancing one another. Right, and it's also making the pill, anybody who takes birth control pills lowers their testosterone level. So I'm trying to raise the testosterone level in someone who is on something that's lowering it. Okay. So it makes it much more difficult yeah. for me to get past that. The pill, make, the pill also makes a lot of sex hormone binding globulin, which binds testosterone. So when I have somebody like that who has to be on the pill, who is still, who is still cycling and has to be on the pill for some reason, then I have to adjust my treatment, increase testosterone levels, and change some of the other treatment that I give them to actually counterbalance their their birth control pills. Yeah. But in general, if I had a choice, I would put every patient on a Mirena IUD because it has a little bit of progesterone in it. It protects the lining of the uterus from getting too thick from, um, from estrogen, and many patients have too much estrogen. Mm -hmm. So it, it keeps them from having heavy periods, slows periods down, decreases their frequency. So it's much nicer for the patient, and it doesn't interfere with my testosterone treatment. Okay. So that's, so that's what we have to do with birth control. So she, she had a Mirena IUD, so not she, birth control So she pills. found you through your website. Right. Just probably around looking for answers on her own to, to problems that it weren't being solved with she'd whatever to, it was that she was doing. She'd been to several doctors. Right. And they had all told her either there was nothing wrong with her or she was just getting older. Or I this was this was typical of somebody in their 40s, so she should get used to it. Yeah. But she was miserable and they com they not only overlooked the low testosterone love the low testosterone, but they overlooked the thyroid problem. And there's reasons for that. I mean when, when general doctors just look at your lab sheet and they're busy and they're, they use, they use HMOs and PPOs and, and different programs that just eat up their time, they basically look down the list and if it, it's almost visual, if your, your level is outside, they put it in a different column. So normal is here and over here is abnormal and they just go, oh, the nothing's abnormal. So you're, you're okay. okay. So that's because they, <laughs> don't use their eyes they use their computers right yeah it's just like the old joke about or they that. are using their eyes they're just looking at a pattern they're not really looking well, at what i mean using detail. their eyes to actually see the person right yeah so right. They, they look at the computer they look at the data it's in the normal ranges and so that's fine right and the normal ranges that are printed on your sheet it's a reason why patients can't really look at their own lab and de determine it it was meant for doctors to go oh this is the thyroid test the patient is oh on thyroid medicine so that patient needs to have a different level, a different normal than what is listed here, or the patient is a female. Well, they just give the male normal. So if you're a female yeah. and your uh, TS thyroid stimulating hormone should be less than 2.5 and you're 3.5, they're going to say you're normal because the normal for men is under 4.5. So 
they're not they're so not sit with all the symptoms your hands and feet are cold you have trouble sleeping mm -hmm. and uh mm -hmm. and she she had she had gained weight she was swollen all over um she had um depression she had all kinds of of her nails weren't growing her hair was breaking off she was miserable and she and she had lots of symptoms that are low testosterone so depression mm -hmm. is both low testosterone and low thyroid so it could be either one, could be either one. and you you want to read and the, yeah, the go through the list for she, me. she looked Kathy up on the website thought okay I want to find out if I can find out something from her so she signed up to take uh, all of the lab tests that are required. There are 17 different ones that give different panels of information that Kathy then looks at. And then she filled out her medical history. And on her medical history, these are the items that she listed. I suffer from depression. I have a loss of libido. I have weight gain in the belly. Difficulty recalling words. Loss of muscle mass and weight bearing, uh, with weight-bearing exercise. Irregular cycles with heavy periods. Hair loss all over the head cold all the time no matter what temperature the room is constipation fatigue hot flashes and dry skin so that's a long list of symptoms mm -hmm. and one that has to be looked at with what exactly could cause these symptoms mm -hmm. and then can then i look at the lab and put both of them together right so one of the first things that i do is divide the symptoms into this is loss of testosterone. Right. This is loss of thyroid. So you can you can. So you have two two lists that you then check, and some some items are in both lists, like depression. Mm -hmm. So for testosterone, the the triggers you look for for somebody suffering from testosterone deficiency is depression, a loss of libido, weight gain in the belly, difficulty recalling words, loss of muscle mass with weight bearing exercise, severe fatigue, and some hot flashes. That's what this person had. There's other symptoms. Right, but of, of the list that she gave you, these like are color-coded for testosterone. Right, in, yeah, in my mind, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then the ones that are color-coded for uh, thyroid symptoms are depression, weight gain in the belly, those both overlap, hair loss all over the head, uh, irregular periods with, he uh, with heavy flow, cold all the time, constipation, severe fatigue, and dry skin. Right. Her, she said her skin, she described her skin as scale-like, like what you would see on a fish. Okay. And I've, that's she, not yeah. unusual with low thyroid. But okay. it almost looks like you could just pick the, the skin cells off, uh -huh. and, and it, the, no amount of lubrication or creams or anything is going to make that any better. You have to get your thyroid fixed. So when, when I looked at her lab and, and her symptoms, I said, oh, well... I've, I've ruled out other things. I ruled out the fact that her prolactin was normal. That's a hormone I, I check. For example, it's a hormone from the pituitary gland, and if it's elevated, uh -huh. then it can actually cause somebody to have irregular cycles. So I looked at that to rule it out. So there's a lot of other tests I'm looking at to make sure what I'm treating her for is the right thing. And so lab helps me rule out some of the other things that could cause these symptoms. Mm -hmm. So then we look at the lab values, which uh, may be helpful for some of you who know what normal lab values are. So, so uh, Brett's going to give you the, the specific values of her testosterone tests and her thyroid tests. Well, her free testosterone, and, and what matters in these tests is not total testosterone, but free. That means it's unbound. Uh, most of the testosterone that your body produces is bound to other things and is not available for the reasons that testosterone is needed. So what Dr. Maupin measures is free testosterone. Uh, her free testosterone was 2.5, and normal is generally 7.0. So she's very low in, mm -hmm. testosterone, in free testosterone. Mm -hmm. yes. And a lot of the lab tests, and, and one of the issues here, a lot of the lab tests just show total testosterone, if that's, what you, if that's all you ask for. And doctors look at the total number and say, well, you're in the total ranges. You should be fine. But if something is causing that total production to be bound at an unreasonable rate, then you don't have enough free that will give you the libido, that will help you with muscle mass and strength and balance, memory call, all the other benefits that come from the testosterone are not available because it's all locked up. Right. So, so really, 
the most important number for women is just free testosterone because that's what's working. Mm -hmm. Everything else is just storage. Right. And it's kind of invisible to your body. So I don't care how much you make. If you've got it all tied up, it's not then helping. it's not helping you. So we need to give you testosterone. That actually helps untie it. Mm -hmm. uh, that helps loosen up more of the testosterone and give you more. So your total will go up. And I don't really care what the total is because it's invisible. I just care about the free. So for her, her symptoms of low testosterone were tied to having a low testosterone. So I could make that diagnosis okay. before she even walked in my office. So then when you check testosterone, uh, you also check estrogen in both yes. men and women. Yes. Because mm -hmm. you know, both produce both testosterone and estrogen. So estrogen, you get two different measures. You get mm -hmm. an estrone and an estradiol. And estrone is old lady estrogen, which is, which comes from the adrenal gland and fat, both areas. You make that's where you make it, mm -hmm. and uh, it goes up as testosterone drops. So it's one of my ways of looking at: is your testosterone really low for you? Right. Because some people, I mean, some people need it's like a seesaw. You try to get it balanced. Right. So the the estrone goes up when the testosterone goes down. So when right. I increase your testosterone, the estrone right. goes down. Estrone gives you belly fat and brain fog and long breasts, not nice breasts, you know, like swollen and painful and, and, uh, and it also causes, uh, heavy periods and it causes fibroids to grow. Okay. It, it really is the bad hormone. So we want it to be half. It's not about a number. It's about a ratio, half right. of your est estradiol, the young woman's estrogen from the ovary. Well, hers was twice as much because her estrone was 90 and her estradiol was 45. And that's evidence again to me that she's making, she has very little testosterone and it's allowing with the low testosterone, it's allowing her estrone to go up and causing many of the symptoms that we consider low testosterone. All right. Those are, those symptoms manifest as like uh, a lot of belly fat, right? Uh, hair loss, fatigue, mm -hmm. Me and confusion, and con and mental, confusion. mental confusion. So, so if you see somebody like that, the first assumption you make is they've got too much estrone. Estrone and low testosterone. And low testosterone right. to, together. Mm -hmm. And so the ratio you're looking for for estrone to estradiol. So estrone should be half of your estradiol. estradiol. So old should be half of your young estrogen. So estradiol is what you want to have. Right. And more, estrone more. is what you don't want to have. Don't want to have. Her estradiol right. was a little low. It's normally 60 to um, 250, but hers was 45. That is just... At that point, and we have them draw, uh, get their blood drawn during a cycle, so that's the lowest it would be all month. Okay, so okay. so she, it's not a really high level of estrogen, but I I'm going to assume because she has really heavy periods, that and she's most likely not ovulating. So um, you have them get the blood draw during the period during because their period. the hormone balances is kind of low base base level. Give you a better baseline. Yeah, and then I don't get this. Spiking because spiking. they're busy trying to release eggs or... Or, ov yeah, ovulate yeah. or uh, second half of the cycle. So I like to draw it during the cycle. Yeah. That's what we do in infertility as well. We usually okay. draw a baseline during the cycle. Okay. Her IGF-1 was 90. What What is IGF? IGF-1 is a way we measure growth hormone. And growth hormone and testosterone drop as we age. So it's one of the hormones that when it drops, it ages us. But when we get it, when we increase our growth hormone, we increase our muscle mass, we decrease our fat, we look younger, we are healthier, we actually can heal better. So a normal range for, for IGF-1. For a 45-year-old woman? For anybody. Anybody. All right. So we, we compare you to a young, healthy, healthy female. Yeah. So young, that would be, uh, a normal level would be 150 to 350. Okay. And it could even be a little over 350 to be normal. If you're normal and you work out a lot and you've got a lot of muscle mass. So that's the bloom of health. That's right. the IGF-1. IGF-1 is Yeah. And health. as you get older and, and that starts to retreat, right. then you start to age and look like And we age. don't have to give growth hormone in general in, mm -hmm. in our practice because when we give testosterone through a pellet, it stimulates growth hormone. Okay. And the only people that that doesn't happen in, that it isn't effective to do that, are people who've had head injuries. Then we need to stimulate their growth hormone, not give them growth hormone, but stimulate its production. Okay. Uh, her T was z point, 0 0.9, and normal is 0.9 to 1.4. Her T4. 
So, which T4, is sorry. is her yes. thyroid. So there are two thyroids, T4 and T3. T4 is, um, we measure that to, to look at what is coming directly out of the thyroid. Mm -hmm. And it is less potent than T3, but it can turn into T3. So we look at that. It's on the lower limits of normal. Well, her T3 was 2.4. And normal is 3.0 to 4.5. And, and the reason that we keep saying what hers was and what normal is, again, is normal is not necessarily a reliable number for these lab tests. Right. So if you look at the and lab. Doctors, just look at. If you look at the lab, the lab T3 no numbers mm -hmm. over the last 10 years have dropped. Every couple of years they'll send us a letter. Oh, your new T3 normal is now 2.4, 2.3, 2.2. Soon it will be normal if you're zero. So who decides that? I don't know. I don't know how the labs do it. They couldn't tell me. Mm -hmm. I've asked them that. Yeah. And they say, well, there's new research. And I'm like, show it to me. Yeah. There isn't any new research. I look at, I read the endocrine journal every single month. That's not necessarily, I mean, there's been a lot of new research that showed that women's TSH should be separate from men's uh -huh. and that it should be lower, but... They don't use that, but they're using something that I've, I I don't know where it comes from. Okay. That is dropping that level. So if she was look if that was looked at by somebody who just looked to see if you were in that column of normal, right. to, for the lab they consider it normal because they've skewed the numbers over the last ten years and it's and it now is normal to be hypothyroid. I mean seriously, you can't be you can't feel normal. If you've got a, if you have a 2.3. So it's like they changed the, uh, the healthy weight right. parameters when they changed the food pyramid. <laughs> right. And suddenly we're all obese. Right. <laughs> right. They, that's because true. For, for many, many years. That's a governmental thing. Yeah. That's, and I don't know if this but is somebody, governmental just sets or a not. And said, this is what we're using. But every lab, like different labs have different normals. Okay. And if I look, most. So, so you have to know if it's a Quest lab. Right. Or a LabCorp. Or, a lab lab, or, or, or God forbid it's a hospital lab. They haven't changed. They haven't changed. Like the normals did change for TSH several years ago, and maybe eight years ago. And the TSH. Um, is the thyroid stimulating hormone. The higher it is, the lower your thyroid is. Okay. So they went from five something to be normal down to four. So so they did change it, but the hospital labs didn't embrace that. So they're they're slow to change that, but they've been changing the T3 and making it go down. I don't so know where what, they get their data. I'm dense. So, so what is the difference between TSH and T3 and T4? Well, TSH stimulates the thyroid. Okay. So if your thyroid is not putting out enough... T it's the driver. And it's the, the driver. It's the, the pusher. And the T4. Right. And then the th okay. thyroid gland. So the TSH comes from your brain, from your pituitary, and your thyroid gland then puts out T3 and T4. Mm -hmm. So those two types of thyroid are then released into the bloodstream. And then... This is, this is what makes it complicated. Some people can have normal T3 and T4. The first step in thyroid production is T3 and T4. It goes through 12 steps to turn your cell, your actual cell on to make energy. Mm -hmm. So there's 12 steps that it has to go through in your, while it's in your bloodstream and partially six in the bloodstream, six inside the cell that has to occur for you to actually make heat out of the food that you eat right. and burn calories. Which so, is why your hands are cold when the numbers are off. Right. So when you have low thyroid, your hands are you're freezing and you're not burning any any calories. Even right. if you exercise, you're not burning a lot of calories because your body is trying to conserve energy. Right. So basically what happens is often lab tests can look great. They can look normal. And the patient has every symptom of low thyroid. And when I treat them with thyroid, they get better. Well, that exact so, situation is what we're going to talk about in our next podcast. Right. So, so what we've done at this point is introduced the problem and gone through the lab values. So Dr. Moffin is looking at this without having seen the patient. The patient came to her randomly from the Internet, sent her this information, filled out the forms that she has online that you could download if you wanted to do this. And then she evaluated that and said, 
having seen all this, I need to see this woman. I think there's a problem that I can help with. So in our next episode, we'll talk about the woman comes in and the conversations that they had and what she noticed and evaluated with the person there to visually see and orally experience. She, she talked about what her symptoms was. Mm -hmm. So then you start matching lab data to symptomology and medical history and presentation. So right. come back next time uh, for episode number 347 and find out what happens. Thank you. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.